Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this America's first Corps Honor Ceremony, honoring the 37 years of service to the nation of Lieutenant General Stephen R. Lanza. America's First Corps and Joint Base Lewis McCord would like to welcome the following individuals. Please save your applause till the end. Ms. Joan Shalikashvili, wife of the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Mayor Ron Lucas from the town of Stillicum. Mayor Mike Quartz from the city of DuPont and his wife, Robbie. Mayor Figueroa from the city of University Place. Lieutenant General Gary Valeski, Commanding General for America's First Corps and Joint Base Lewis McCord and his wife Leanne. Retired Lieutenant General Bear ha Bill Harrison, former Commanding General for America's First Corps and former Mayor for the City of Lakewood. Command Sergeant Major Tony Grinston, Command Sergeant Major for America's First Corps and his wife Alexandra. Major General Tom James, Commanding General, 7th Infantry Division, and his wife, Shelley. Major General M Mark Stammer, Deputy Commanding General for America's First Corps, and his wife, Donna. Major General Brett Doherty, Adjutant General for the State of Washington. Retired Major General Byron Bagby. Retired Major General Kurt Fuller. Retired Major General Don Brown and his wife, Joan. Retired Major General J.B. Taylor and his wife, Sally. Retired Major General Tom Cole and his wife, Dottie. Retired General Ed Trobo, Command Sergeant Major Jack Love, Command Sergeant Major for the 7th Infantry Division and his wife, Cindy. Ms. Lynn Tai, District Representative for Congressman Adam Smith. Ms. Mary Findlay, Retired Chief Warrant Officer 5, Mike Freed, JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame member. Ms. Tamara Jenkins, former mayor of DuPont and JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame member and her husband Clint. Ms. Amy T. Meyer, president of the Meriwether Lewis Clark chapter of AUSA and JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame member. Ms. Joan Caulfield, city manager for the city of Lakewood and JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame member. Mr. Mark Fouch, former mayor of Olympia and JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame member and his wife, Janet Charles. Dean David Olwell, St. Martin's University in Lacey, Washington. Brigadier General Jack Cayley, commanding general for the 593rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command. Brigadier General Wally Turner, Army Assistant Adjutant General for the state of Washington. Brigadier General Danny Fortin, Deputy Commanding General for Operation, America's First Corps, and his wife, Madeline Kahn. Ms. Malagudo, wife of Brigadier General Tony Agudo in Germany. Brigadier General Ron Stevens, Deputy Commanding General for the Regional Health Command in the Pacific. Brigadier General Omar Jones, Deputy Commanding General for Operation, 7th Infantry Division, and his wife, Tracy. Retired Brigadier General, Oscar Hillman. Ms. Alicia Grady, AUSA President for Washington State. Command Sergeant Major Pam Williams, Command Sergeant Major for the 593rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command. A special welcome to our Gold Star family members and Lieutenant General Lanza's 1980s West Point classmates. Please give a round of applause for all our distinguished guests. At this time, Master Sergeant Karen L. Moody from America's First Corps Sergeant Audie Murphy Club will present a bouquet of flowers to Lieutenant General Lanza's wife, Madeline, to thank her for the support she has shown to all the soldiers and families throughout their 20 years of marriage. Lieutenant General Lanza's mother, Marie Lanza, is being presented with a bouquet of flowers to thank her for the support she has given. Lieutenant General Lanza's aunt, Laura Catafamo, is being presented with a bouquet of flowers to thank her for the support she has given.
Lieutenant General Lanza's goddaughter, Karen Katafimo, is being presented with a bouquet of flowers to thank her for the support she has given. <laughs> the formation of troops to your front is composed of division, brigade, group commanders, command sergeants major, colors, and bearers from units assigned to America's First Corps and stationed at Joint Base lewis mccord The reviewing officer and host commander for today's ceremony is General Mark A. Milley, the 39th Chief of Staff, United States Army. The commander of troops is Colonel Andrew J. Hyatt, Assistant Chief of Staff, G-8, America's First Corps. The command bugler is Sergeant First Class Todd Borges. America's First Corps band is under the direction of Sergeant First Class Shelby Barber. America's First Corps Command Color Guard non-commissioned officer in charge is Sergeant Roy Norby. The salute battery is from 1st Battalion, 37th Field Artillery Regiment. The officer in charge is 1st Lieutenant Connor Porter. The non-commissioned officer in charge is Sergeant First Class Arthur Sierra. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by America's First Corps Command Chaplain, Chaplain Yvonne Hudson, and remain standing for the arrival of the official party honors, and the national anthem. Let us pray. We come before you today, most wonderful God, to honor Lieutenant General Lanza, Madeline, and Raymond. As a family, they willingly served you, our country, and the Army with excellence. You never left their side, and only you know how much they sacrificed for service members, civilians, and families. May they hear your words of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servants. We ask, most gracious God, that you reward the Lanzas for their commitment. Pour out your blessings upon them as they step into this new chapter. Fill their days with opportunities, well-deserved rest, and an abundance of family time. In your most holy name we pray, amen. Attention! General Milley has deferred honors to Lieutenant General Lanza for this occasion. Now to present art.
Please be seated. Detachment. Order. Arms. Sound. Order. Arms. And parade. Rest. At this time, the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club will accompany Mrs. Lanza and General Milley for the awards presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the award presentation. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9, 1918, has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Lieutenant General Stephen R. Lanza for 37 years of exceptionally meritorious service in the United States Army, given under my hand in the City of Washington, signed General Mark A. Milley, Chief of Staff, and Robert M. Spear, Acting Secretary of the Army. Lieutenant General Lanza is also being presented with the national flag and a certificate of retirement signed by the Chief of Staff of the Army. And that's the real deal. <laughs> this is the only piece of paper that matters right now. You're out. A Soldier for Life pin is being presented to Lieutenant General Lanza, representing that even though he is hanging up his uniform, he will always be a soldier, no matter where his future endeavors may take him.
General Milley is presenting a certificate of appreciation to Madeline Lanza on the occasion of the retirement of her spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for her own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Her unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible her spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Mark A. Milley, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, the 39th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General Mark A. Milley. All right, how's everybody doing out here at the mighty Fortress Lewis? Uh, can you handle Valesky's leadership? Oh. Hey, look at, uh, I've got, uh, frankly, some very mixed emotions uh, this week uh, for me. And on the one hand, it's great just to be out of D.C., and I don't know how many of you have ever had much experience in D.C., but it's a pretty interesting place uh, right now. And, uh, and it's really great to have gotten out for a few days, uh, went down to Bragg and <clears throat> a couple other places, and, and then to come out here. So it's great to be out of D.C. And, and for those of you who are laughing, and perhaps your colonels or brigadiers, uh, you'll have your shot, because I am your assignments officer, and I will ensure uh, that you suffer equally well and get to D.C. at some point. Uh, so don't laugh too hard. Uh, but on the downside for me, it's, uh, it's one of those weeks when I'm saying goodbye to two good friends. The other day, had the opportunity to retire Pat Donahue, <coughs> who, uh, like Steve, spent 37 years in uniform, plus the four years uh, at West Point. And then today, of course, uh, saying goodbye to Steve Lanza. And uh, those of us who have all served uh, over the years with the both of them uh, have had the same experiences and shared the same pain of combat and the joy of selfless service uh, since we were second lieutenants. So for me, it's a bit conflicting for the week. And for Steve Lanza, uh, he has served incredibly for 37 years in the regular Army and four years at West Point, 41 years. Total, really almost 42 here it would be next uh, month. And Steve, uh, personally, I'm very humbled. I'm very humbled that you asked me to come here and officiate uh, the ceremony. Uh, and I was thanking you profusely last night uh, on the Midnight Express as I left New York City at 2200, flew consecutively for five hours just for you, Steve. <clears throat> and I arrived here at 0300 just for you, Steve. But it's truly an honor. And uh, thank you all. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate honor and bid farewell to this great soldier. There's many notables uh, in the audience today. There's uh, mayors and many general officers, uh, many sergeant majors. Uh, sergeant Major Green, where you at? Somewhere out here. Uh, thank you. And, and I know what's in your future as well. Thanks for uh, representing all that's good about the non-commissioned officer corps of our Army. Uh, thanks to. Uh, all of the great leaders out here, General Valesky and your entire team, thank you. Uh, I want to point out a couple of folks, though, in the crowd uh, are two great uh, friends of mine, <clears throat> and I think two of the finest soldiers our nation has ever produced, uh, in Mike Fuller and his brother Kurt, who is standing back there. Kurt's the guy with the beard, by the way, in case you don't know what he looks like. I've served alongside a lot of fine troops, a lot of fine non-commissioned officers, and a lot of fine officers over the years. Uh, but I, frankly, I've never seen two as good as uh, the two Fuller brothers, Mike and Kurt. So thanks uh, to both of you for your service. And Mike, thanks uh, for your continued service out here as the MSC director at Fort Lewis. Uh, I also uh, want to thank Mrs. Shelley Kashavili for being here. Uh, that's an uh, incredible honor for us to have uh, the spouse of uh, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who unfortunately uh, is not with us, but he's clearly here in his presence. Uh, the great leadership that both of you provided over the years. Thank you uh, for being here. Uh, General retired Bill Harrison is here, uh, former First Corps commander, uh, also the commander of the 7th Infantry Division, 
uh, when I was a young captain, he didn't know me necessarily, but we all looked up to him. And, and frankly, if it wasn't for him and the experience of 7th Division, I would have popped out of the Army uh, a long time ago. So thank you, sir, uh, for your mentorship and your leadership, uh, both here and the 7th Division, for your service in Vietnam. Uh, you're a great leader, uh, and you're down in the annals of one of the great generals of American history. Uh, General Peter Corelli is not here with us today. He came in last week uh, to say goodbye to Steve. But uh, General Corelli had a tremendous influence over Steve. He was uh, then Major General Peter Corelli, Commanding General of the 1st Cavalry Division. Uh, and he had a few folks under him at that time that you might name, uh, recognize their names. Uh, of course, Steve Lanza was one of his brigade commanders. Uh, Valesky, you might remember him. He was one of the battalion commanders. Uh, but there was also uh, Abe Abrams at Forces Command, was a brigade commander for him. Uh, Mike from Iker, who later became an SES. Uh, Mike Murray, who's still a serving uh, three-star on the Army staff. Uh, Jim McConville, who was just confirmed for his fourth star and will become our next Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. Uh, myself and, of course, Steve Lanza. Uh, it was an incredible lineup in the first cabin in Baghdad, and I know General Corelli couldn't be here today, uh, but Steve, I want to send you his best, and he is so proud of your service. I also uh, want to say thank you and, and with a great deal of humility to the Gold Star families uh, that are in the audience uh, today, and I know there's several. I won't ask you to stand, uh, but I want you to know that all of us uh, are with you every day. Uh, you and your soldier uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice, uh, and we recognize that. Uh, all of us gave some, but you gave all. Uh, and we deeply appreciate uh, your service and your sacrifice. The class of 1980 is here, and they sound about as weak as they did at the Donahue <laughs> retirement. So there were a 1,000 cadets admitted. Five made it here. <clears throat> the rest of them are probably no longer with us. Because, yes, you are getting old. So let me, let me hear it once more. Pride and excellence, class of 80. That's a little bit better. Is that all right? That's satisfactory, I guess. <clears throat> so, so I'll come back to the class of 80 a couple of different times. So I want you guys to stay on your toes uh, and be prepared. So, uh, and I'll talk about Steve. Uh, in a moment, but uh, let me brag for just a moment uh, about what an incredible job the, the soldiers and the leaders of First Corps are doing every day to assure our friends and deter our enemies. Uh, the global reach of First Corps is really amazing. Uh, troops from this Corps today are currently deployed this week, right now today, uh, throughout the Pacific. First Corps soldiers are in Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Australia. In Europe, First Corps soldiers are in Germany, Italy, and Kosovo. They're in Central America and Honduras, and in Southwest Asia and the Middle East. Thousands of First Corps soldiers are serving currently in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Think about that for a minute that a single United States Army Corps has soldiers in 17 countries, both here and abroad. That's amazing. They are working for five different combatant commanders. <clears throat> They're assuring partners and allies. They're deterring aggression. They're bringing the fight to the enemy. And their missions vary from training exercises to humanitarian assistance, to peacekeeping, to advisory missions, to full-up combat operations against ISIS, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, the Haqqani Network, and other like-type groups. And the Corps is in a constant state of improving preparations to deter aggression against North Korea. In fact, First Corps today is the most capable, most highly trained, most rapidly deployable corps in the United States Army, and it is easily the most capable three-star joint headquarters in any of our services. First Corps is constantly honing its skills, and they've taken it 
to a new level of readiness under Steve Lanza, and we'll take it yet again to another level of readiness under Valesky. First Corps and all of its units and soldiers are incredibly impressive, and they are extraordinarily capable as a combat organization. And frankly, it's a direct reflection of the last three, almost half, three and a half years of Steve Lanza's leadership. <clears throat> his dedication to the current and future readiness of the Army and his commitment to the welfare of the soldiers and civilians and their families here and in many other posts. For four decades, our Army has benefited from the leadership, character, and competence of Steve Lanza. And very few, very few of his year group 1980 out of West Point continue to serve. Very few of the 1980 out of West Point continue to serve. Of course, we have General Brooks holding the line over in Korea, and he was the class first captain. Joe Votel is fighting terrorists in the Middle East at the helm of CENTCOM. Tony Thomas is fighting terrorists all over the world as the commander of SOCOM. Dave Perkins is setting conditions for our future at TRADOC. Ben Hodges is staring the Russians in the face, making 30,000 look like 300,000, while Gary Cheek tries to support all of them as the director of the Army staff. And of course, Pat Donahue just retired after making significant contributions as a DCG at Forcecom. This is all that remains of that class that first took the plane at West Point in 1976 as an honorary member of that class of 1980 because they couldn't stand it that an ROTC grad was the chief of staff of the Army. They made me an honorary grad. Go ROTC, baby. And, but I will say that I am incredibly proud of what the United States Military Academy class of 1980 has continues to do to defend our country. And Steve Lanza has been there every step of the way. In fact, Steve has risen to become the senior field artillery officer in the Army. And he has served as the longest serving Corps commander in U.S. Army history. Think about that. But I do, unfortunately, I do, unfortunately, need to highlight one very serious character flaw. In fact, last night on the flight, my anger management skills were having to come into play. And I was thinking of initiating an IG investigation on Steve, <laughs> since this character flaw is so serious. It was almost a deal breaker for me as to whether I would even come out here for this event. You see, Steve's a native New Yorker. He's the real deal, a native of Brooklyn, but it gets far worse than that. He's a New York Yankees fan. And as many of you know, in fact, everyone here knows, that Yankee fans are morally corrupt. They are mentally challenged. They are in your face. They are violently anti-everything. And of course, unlike the Boston Red Sox fans who, there you go, who represent the paragon of virtue, fair play, athletic skill, sportsmanship, and, and even our football team usually plays with inflated balls. <laughs> but I forgave Steve. Steve overcame his limitations of Yankee loyalty, and he actually confessed to me last night on the tarmac when I landed. He got down on one knee and kissed the ring. And he said, Chief, I am actually a closet Red Sox fan. You are now outed. Hey, look, at achieving the rank of Lieutenant General in the United States Army is very, very difficult. And the probability is not high, especially for a Yankee-loving Brooklynite with a Boston Chief of Staff. But we only have 48 three-star generals in our Army. In 1980, there were 9,862 lieutenants commissioned in an army of 18 active duty divisions and eight National Guard divisions with 725,000 soldiers in the regular army and another half a million in our National Guard and Reserve. The odds of ending up in the top 50 general officer ranks 
is not great. Steve's an artilleryman, so to put it in Steve's artillery language, that is point zero 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 one probability of a hit. <laughs> in fact, on the flight, I discovered something new called Siri, and <laughs> I went with Siri, my new friend, on the information highway, and she told me that you are more likely to be struck by the lightning at some point in your life than to make Lieutenant General in the Army. So something that all of you brigadiers should keep in mind, by the way. And as for your major generals, check this out. You're more likely, actually, according to Siri, to be struck by a meteorite or get injured by a falling vending machine than you are to make Lieutenant General. It's amazing how the internet can crush the hopes and aspiration of our next generation of generals. In some ways, Steve Lanza won the lottery. But winning the lottery is pure luck and requires no skill, no sense of duty, no sense of commitment, no consideration of someone's character. And Steve Lanzer has demonstrated throughout his entire career of 40 years exceptional skill, character, and ability. And it is we, the Army, it is we, the soldiers that Steve led, who were truly lucky. It is we who won the lottery to have him lead us, lead our units, lead our soldiers in both peace and war. We all know that Steve barely graduated from West Point in 1980, <laughs> but he did spend the rest of his life making up for the hundreds of hours he walked on the area. He started out in the 101st Airborne as a fist team chief and then found himself on the forward edge of freedom with the 1st Armored Division in Bavaria, Germany as a battery commander. When the U.S. Army was facing down the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War, after battery command, the Army sent him to the National Training Center as an observer controller and then on to command an artillery battalion in the Big Red One, the famed 1st Infantry Division. That was soon followed by Devardi Command in an equally famous 1st Cavalry Division under General Corelli. He was selected to command here, the 7th Infantry Division, and then, of course, 1st Corps. In between, he did a whole variety of key jobs at various levels most notably in division plans and the critical work on the Joint Staff in D.C. But it's his combat record that distinguishes Steve from the rest. He has served in combat at various levels and on various contingency operations at every rank since he was a captain. He's a veteran of Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Bosnia, and multiple tours in Iraq, both as a colonel and as a general. And it was in Iraq where I first met Steve on the violent streets of Baghdad, we commanded the first Devardi ever to be converted to an infantry brigade combat team. He was the brigade combat team on my flank, on a border being highly contested, a border known as Route Irish, where we took 77 suicide vehicle car bombs in 12 months. I personally saw Steve's skill and his courage under fire on many occasions, and all of his fellow brigade commanders in the first cav learned a great deal from Steve. Much myth has been written and is made of counterinsurgency doctrine and operations in places like Mosul and Anbar. But Steve Lanza, without media coverage, and the first cav under Corelli was doing coin long before Mosul and Anbar and the famous coin manual were ever even penned. It was Steve Lanza who was innovative and in leading the way he was one of the early few who understood the nature of the war we were fighting, and he adapted. In fact, he led the way in adapting all of us. He integrated offensive and defensive combat operations with economic development, political engagement. He protected the population while developing good local governance, and he did so much more. What is commonly understood today as the way to fight in a counterinsurgency environment was not well understood at that time, except by incredible leaders like Steve Lanza. And he had the courage of his convictions to lead the way, speak truth to power, and impose innovative solutions and controversial solutions on an extremely violent and complex problem. And Steve has done the same thing here at First Corps, leading the way in readiness to prepare the force for an entirely different type of operation. He has made the First Corps headquarters truly operational and deployable prepared to meet any contingency that our nation faces in the PACOM AOR 
as demonstrated in exercises like Pacific Pathways, Balakatan, and UFL, and many others. Steve has always been the right man, the right commander, in the right place at the right time. Our nation owes a huge debt of gratitude for your leadership. This Corps owes you a huge debt of gratitude for leading them in the cause of readiness. And we won't fully realize how much we owe you until the next year or two unfolds and we see what happens in the Pacific. Your competence, your compassion, your character. You are one, Steve, of our great generals today. And it's my honor and those of us in the crowd today to have served proudly along your side. On behalf of everyone here and the thousands that are not here, the thousands that couldn't make it, all the soldiers, the sergeants, and the officers, thank you. Thank you for a lifetime of service and sacrifice. We're all very, very proud of you. But Steve didn't do this by himself. In fact, none of us do. Wearing the cloth of our nation is a family commitment, a family affair. And Steve's parents, Ray and Marie, are here today with us, and thank you for being here. And it is they who instilled in Steve a sense of duty and commitment that would shape his character indelibly for his 40 years of service. His dad, Ray, served as a field artilleryman in the Korean War with the 48th Division, where he was wounded in combat in the brutal hill fights in that tough battle called the Korean War. Steve's uncle, Phil, is a retired Air Force colonel because he couldn't make the standards of the United States Army. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> but we are proud that he served in Vietnam, and Steve's family knows what it means to heed the call of the colors. And the sacrifice of soldiering, however, always falls most heavily on the immediate family. In four days, Steve and his wife, Madeline, will celebrate 21 years of marriage. <laughs> and Steve and Madeline were married around the time when Steve first headed to Europe as an Iron Major with the first ID, Devardi. And then he served as an aide de camp to the U.S. Army Europe Commanding General, General Crouch, which actually to Steve may have seemed like it was a combat tour. <coughs> And he's not here, so I can say that. So, and it's in Germany, not the United States, mind you. So it took a very special person <clears throat> to marry in to the Army at that point. And as you know, Madeline is a college English professor, and, well, Steve is not. <laughs> Steve was a 2-0 and go GPA from West Point <laughs> with a heavy Brooklyn accent masking as some alien form of English. So it really took someone special to consider marriage. And there's no doubt in my mind, and I have witnesses to prove it, that Madeline ghost wrote Steve's papers at Sam's and the National War College. <laughs> Not only did she get Steve through school, but Madeline has given countless hours in family readiness groups as a mentor to junior spouses, a family team building trainer, a trusted advisor to a wide variety of organizations, a motivational speaker, and much, much more. And all of it was not for credit or compensation. It was all done as a volunteer. And like all of our volunteers, Madeline gave her time and energy out of pure love for her soldier and the soldiers and families that Steve led through the years. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you from the bottom of all our hearts for all you've done during the past 20 plus years of service as an Army spouse. There's not enough words to express our gratitude for what you have done. You have touched thousands. You have touched thousands of soldiers and families in a very positive way, and so thanks. Thanks for your inspiration. Thanks for your selfless giving. Thanks for your grace under pressure and your unwavering support to our Army, our soldiers, and all of their families. And Steve and Madeline have one son, Raymond who has red laces. <laughs> Sorry, Raymond. <laughs> Raymond is 15 years old, and he loves school. He's a straight-A student. He plays baseball, third base, and football as a linebacker. And 
he too has now quietly confessed to me that he is a committed Patriots and Red Sox fan. <laughs> Just say it, Raymond. Just <laughs> say it out loud. And now, Raymond, that Dad is retiring, you're going to get to see more of him, and you'll get to sit there and watch those games as the Red Sox and Patriots take the championships and watch your dad continually steal all of your clothes. <laughs> and remember, Raymond, while West Point is really a great school, you don't actually have to go there. Your dad, despite what he says, despite his Brooklyn background, despite his faking that he's really poor. He's not. <laughs> he can pay for college. So Raymond, I strongly recommend that you consider Princeton <laughs> at the modest sum of $70,000 per year. I think that's a much better deal than actually getting paid for going to school at West Point. So seriously, Raymond, you're the most important person in your dad's life. And he's so incredibly proud of you, and he talks about you all the time. But without your support and without your constant love, your dad would not be here today. So thank you, Raymond. So Steve and Madeline and Raymond, uh, all of you have contributed invaluably to the, not only the Army, but the Joint Force and, in fact, the entire Department of Defense. We're going on four decades now. And your confidence, your compassion, your demonstrated excellence in everything is absolutely without peer. You're the best of the best. You've proven yourself over and over again in the crucible of ground combat. You've taken care of soldiers and accomplished the mission, and no one could ask more. Thanks to each of you, and may God bless you in the future. Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Stephen R. Lanza. You know, I don't know where to start. I'm a Seinfeld fan. You know what? George Costanza quits when he's ahead. And uh, after those comments, Chief, thanks. My mom's saying, who? What? But uh, thanks for all for coming today. I'm extremely humbled. And uh, I want to start out by thanking Sergeant Major Lohmeyer, uh, Colonel Harvey, the entire Corps team, General Valesky, for doing this today. Really appreciate it and quite honored that you would put this together today. I want to welcome Ms. Sholly today. Ma'am, thank you, and thanks for your example. Chief, thanks very much. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but the chief has done two ceremonies this week. He's back and forth, and uh, he's got a lot going on and a lot on his plate. And chief, for you to come out here to do this today, you honor us, you honor our family, you honor the Corps, and you honor this post here. So thanks very much for taking the time to do this. It is extremely an honor to have you here today. I want to say hi to General Harrison. Thanks. The chief mentioned General Harrison earlier, and uh, General Harrison, you epitomize what it means to be a soldier for life. So, sir, thanks for being here today. Our senior military and civic leaders that are here today, family, friends, teammates, thanks for coming here to celebrate uh, with my family uh, our service in the Army. I want to thank the color guard, all the soldiers behind me, the salute battery and the band. They're magnificent. And I think the great thing about these soldiers behind me, they represent what's great about our Army and what's great about our nation. And I'd ask you to join me in a round of applause for these great soldiers today. The Chief talked about my classmates that are here today, class of 80, oh, pride and excellence. Uh, got a good friend of mine, Bob Knight, and after this, the treaty is no longer, you know, we can validate the treaty now, and you're free to say whatever you want after this. But uh, they are the best friends, the best teammates, and uh, some of the best people I've had the privilege to know over the last couple of decades, and they've been with us every day to support us, and they're great friends. So guys, thanks for being here today. And uh, Chief, we're honored to have you a member of our class today. But uh, more importantly, you and I can talk Yankees and Red Sox. Though, Raymond, I tell you what, you were leaning there a little bit, weren't you? <laughs> I saw you leaning. The, the pressure was on. Four beats three every day, all right? And I, I, saw, you, I saw you leaning just a little bit, all right? And um, I just want to start, you know, last week I was at a commissioning ceremony, and I had the honor and the privilege to administer the oath and pin on the lieutenant bars of a young cadet just down the road here. And as I did that, I saw the pride in all the lieutenant's eyes as they were commissioned and they started out their new journey. And the chief earlier talked about reflecting, and today as I reflect back, I'm very thankful and I'm proud that I've had the opportunity to walk this path and serve in this profession so many years ago. It's been, it's been wonderful. 
Uh, the chief mentioned my family today, just a little bit about them. As you all know, the chief said I grew up in New York City. I did. I rooted for the Yankees every single day, the Giants and Rangers, the Knicks. Stop. Stop. And loved every minute of it. And the chief talked about my dad, who was awarded the Purple Heart. Uh, but just a little bit about my mom and dad. They both worked full time to provide for my brother, who's here today with his wife, Terry, and my sister, and gave us everything we needed. And more importantly, they instilled in us the values and a strong foundation uh, in us, strong work ethic, the importance of humility, loyalty, personal responsibility, and embracing every challenge. And I just want to share with you today that in August, they'll be married 63 years. So. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I love you very much. And uh, to my brother and his wife, Terry Robert, thanks for all your support. Also with us, you heard about my Uncle Phil, retired Air Force, and his, uh, my wife, or his wife, Aunt Laura, and my goddaughter, Karen. And Karen, it is so special to have you here today. They've been supporting me since day one when I was commissioned and barely graduated, all the way to today. So they, they've been with us the whole time, and thank you very much. And Chief, I just want to take a minute to thank you for inspiring leadership. Everybody here knows this, not just here, but throughout the nation and all you've done for the Army. The focus on readiness, leader development, more importantly, the vision of where you're taking the Army to get us ready for whatever challenges will uh, come upon us in the future and win any conflict. And it is about winning, and the Chief has definitely taken us in the right direction. His commitment, so you all know this, to our military and our nation is unequal. And uh, I was proud to serve with you in Iraq and honored to have you on my flank, and nobody had a better wingman than I did with 210 out of Fort Drum. And Chief, I wish you and Holly Ann and your family all the best as you continue to serve our nation. Many former commanders and leaders, men like Larry Aaron, Lanny Smith, and the many senior leaders I was privileged to serve with, they've let me make mistakes, they've let me grow, they've had the confidence to see potential, and more importantly, they've inspired me through their wisdom, and they've continued to fuel my passion to serve. I'm grateful to serve alongside so many officers, warrants, and civilians. Many of them are here today. All of them with vision, all of them inspired, and all of them every single day doing the best to accomplish our mission. And I thank you all that are here on behalf of all that I've served with over the last 30 years. Many NCOs that I've served with, both here and uh, in the past, and I've got to tell you, in my experience having been in the Corps, you are the envy of every military in the world. Every military in the world envies what our non-commissioned officers bring. Your true professionals with competence, unwavering character, from my first platoon sergeant, a guy named Glenn Nye, to James Norman, Tony Grinston, role models all, and role models for soldiers to emulate. You've molded countless lives and to include mine. And it's all about servant leadership, looking out for soldiers' concern, and you've taught me a deeper meaning of selfless service. So to all non-commissioned officers, I thank you. Uh, to the many soldiers I've served with over the years, I've been inspired by what you do every single day. You act based on trust in your leaders, and you become NCOs always acting with courage and commitment to our nation. And I can tell you, Chief, and you know this, our future's bright because of these great soldiers, the NCOs they're going to become, and they'll continue to lead our Army well into the future to meet the requirements forever our nation asks us to do. And over my career, I've had some great memories, and I've had some great moments. But it's the people, and always the people, that I'll remember the most, and it's the people that I will miss the most as I transition. It's been wonderful to be with people of such character over the last couple of decades. The chief talked about the families, and the families allow us to do what we love to do because of their sacrifice, and they do bear the greatest burden. And I thank all the families over the years and now for their unwavering support. You are indeed the heart behind the shield in all we do, and a special thanks to our Gold Star family members that are here and those throughout the nation that have paid the ultimate sacrifice to support our nation. I've been privileged to work in many communities over my career, starting at Fort Campbell, as the chief said, to JBLM, and I thank these communities for all the support for our soldiers and families because we could not do it without you every single day. So thanks very much. And I can certainly say if it wasn't for the Army, I wouldn't have met the most important person in my life, and that's Madeline. And as the Chief said, we've been married for 21 years this month, and uh, I'm still behind from last year. I'm, I know. I am. I'm way behind on points from last year. But uh, Madeline, this ceremony is as much about you as it is about me. And I thank you for your love and support. It's never ceased to amaze me and everybody else, probably. That, but uh, you've been a pillar of support. Thanks. But I see you there smiling, and uh, you've been a pillar of support always with grace, compassion, wisdom, and the willingness to help and keep your arms open. I'm just so proud of you. And uh, you've always known the right thing to do. You've opened my eyes. You've been my biggest supporter, my biggest critic, and my better 90%. And I'm blessed to have you and have your love. So thank you, honey.
And Raymond, we're going to stay a Yankees fan? Yeah. Yep, okay. We're, we're gonna... But I could not be more proud of you, Raymond, and the man you're growing up to be. And uh, you're carving your own path into adulthood, and I could not have asked for a better son. So thanks, Raymond, and thanks for being a great son and a great supporter. And as I stand my last formation today, I'm very grateful and very humbled. It's been an incredible journey, and, and I'm thankful for the camaraderie, the esprit de corps, and more importantly, the countless friends we have made along the way. It's been my greatest honor to serve our nation and a privilege to lead and serve alongside such courageous men and women as yourself. And I'm going to save this for Madeline because she's a literature major, but long ago, the author F. Scott Fitzgerald talked about World War I, and he called World War I the love battles because he couldn't figure out what compelled men to go into battle and give their lives for their buddies and give their lives for their country and their friends. And we often say that the Army is a life of service and a life of sacrifice, but it's also a life of love. And uh, I've loved being part of this team. I've loved being part of this profession and working with the men and women that I was honored and privileged to serve with every single day. I've loved having Madeline Raymond on this journey with me, and I loved being a soldier every single day. So it's been a great life. It is a great life for those of you who continue to serve. May God bless you and your families, this great Army, our nation, Army strong. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Sergeant First Class Julio Vasquez from 1st Battalion, 37th Field Artillery, is pre presenting Lieutenant General Lanza with a cannon shell casing from the last round fired today in his honor. The band will now play a tribute to Lieutenant General Lanza and play the retirement medley. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of America's First Corps and Army songs. The words can be found in your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. Please join the Lanza family for a reception at the Sam Adams Brew Pub immediately following. Have a wonderful America's First Core Day.